Welcome to the Bright Beard Show. I'm Jules Dormain, and with me, I've got Coach Beard. Coach Beard, how are you doing today? Man, I love being on the set with you, so I'm doing great. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so obviously, you know, coming off of the, the tough loss against Central, a big, big time opponent and a big time district game, you know, how were the feelings coming from that? Yeah, you, you know, uh, not what we wanted, not the outcome we wanted, you, you know, but they, we, we took away some, you know, some things we can continue to grow. Uh, you know, we're not one to make excuses. You know, everybody knows we've had some things happen injury-wise and everything else, part of the game. Uh, but it's our job as coaches to find out who can do what and get those guys put in spots to give us a chance to be successful again. And, you know, that's where we're at. When, you know, when you're working through this at the probably the worst time because you get the big-time District 4-5A opponent in Central, a big rivalry game. Then you get your, your big-time opponent in Zachary. Then you get your, your big-time opponents in the Livingston Parish rivalry games. And you finish with Scotlandville. And here we are trying to to put some you know put some things together, piece some things together, kind of kind of create a new identity and a new excitement, a new excitement, uh, you know, more so offensively. And uh, you know, we, we hit a little, we hit some bumps in the road, and uh, it's our job to uh, continue to fight through it and and, and coach them up and you know and, and still constant confidence in them so they can uh, continue to do the job we need them to do. Yes, sir. Uh, let's look at those highlights. Your Denim Springs Yellow Jackets take the field in Central. Um, Don in the white jersey on the the white pants. We didn't get to wear those white helmets. That would have been sweet. All right, first drive, uh, QB, number 17, Ryder Wygant, handoff to number five, Ray McNeely. Big tackle, uh, number 17, Wygant, handoff to number seven, Micah Harrison, who runs for another first down. Jackets steady driving down the field. Noah Hood with the kick would actually be blocked by <clears throat> Central. Central on offense now. Number five, Jerrion Brown with the reverse, but the Jackets defense isn't fooled. Number eight, Hayden rushing on the tackle. 0-0 zero, zero after the, the first quarter. Second quarter, QB number 13, Jonathan Swift. Pass is actually intercepted by number 21, Mason Edwards. Huge play. It's a pick six, 7-0. Coach, let's talk about our DB play. Yeah, I, I thought we played really well the other night. I thought we competed defensively. You know, we hit a couple of rough patches. I don't know if we got a little tired, got ran out of gas, saw some some old things that kind of reared uh, reared their head. You know, we got to just keep playing. You got to keep battling no matter what happens on the scoreboard, no matter what offense is doing. You just got to keep playing and making plays, and that's what they did. Yes, sir. Uh, this is a big momentum shift in our our side. <clears throat> you got uh, Mason Edwards, you know, running off to the bench after that big play. Central, now on offense, number 13, Swift, screen pass to number four, Javon Washington, blown up by number 14, Ethan Foster. Wildcats will be forced to punt. Our offense, our defense being very dominant. Jackets ball, number 17, Wygant on the keeper, stuffed by Central's defense. <clears throat> Would result in Central ball. Um, Number 13, forced to scramble and runs for a huge gain down the sideline. Finally gets pushed out of bounds by Jed Cambrian. Fourth down for Central. Number 13, Swift. Pass falls incomplete in the end zone. Turnover on downs. Jackets would uh, stall. It'd be Central ball late in the half. Number 13, Swift. Screen pass to number 26, Glenn Gage, who is wide open and takes it all the way for a touchdown. Coach, what happened to the coverage on this play? Yeah, you know, just a busted coverage, man. Kids playing for the first time, starting for the first time. He, you know, he's wanting to do everything he can right and gets caught up on number one receiver uh, with that two coming out of the backfield with the play action look right there. And, uh, just kind of got sucked in and, and number two leaked out and, uh, you, you know, our, our guy didn't take him. But uh, I can assure you we've got it corrected and, and he's ready to go again. Yes, sir. It would be um, seven to seven. Jackets on offense, number 17, Wygant, handoff to number five, Ray McNeely, who makes a nice cut and gets a decent game. 7-7 seven, seven, tie at halftime. Second half now, number 13 Swift on the keeper gets stuffed by a whole horde of jackets. Defense still playing really well. Third and long for Central, number 13 Swift throws deep. Pass is broken up by number 21 uh, Edwards, but a flag is thrown for pass interference and Edwards would go down on the play and would not return for the rest of the game. The very next play, number 13 
Touchdown pass to number five, Brown. Central takes the lead. Extra point, no good, 13 to seven. Coach, uh, what happened here? Yeah, that's actually the perfect call against the coverage we had. It was a, it's a beater that gives us fits. You, you're asking an outside linebacker to cover a number two receiver man, uh, which is a tough matchup to begin with. And they did a great job. It was a great throw. It was a great route. And uh, they just made the big play. Uh, this time, uh, number five, McNeely takes the cap. He carries it, but is stuffed by the central defense. Jackets would be forced to punt. Jackets punting now. Um, there would be a big return by number 12, Tyler Heal, making multiple people miss, streaking down the middle of the field, and makes a huge gain, setting up the central uh, offense in Denham Springs territory. You know, obviously he's getting hyped up on the sideline after that big play. A few plays later, number 13, Swift, handoff to number six, Kyle Veal, who runs straight up the middle and scores 27 to Central. Coach, talk about the momentum change in this game. Yeah, you know, we uh, we put our defense in a couple of bad spots. You know, we weren't, we weren't capitalizing offensively. They'd been out there a little while at this point, and uh, I think we were trying to do a little too much as coaches and put them in some bad spots too late, and uh, they were able to gash us. Yes, sir. Jackets ball now, number 17, Wygant, back to pass. Uh, under pressure, has to fling it to number 20. Uh, he is tackled, and Denham is forced to punt yet again. You know, big story of this game. Central ball, number 13, Swift, on the keeper for a decent gain. Next play, number 13, handoff to number 26, who makes some nice moves breaking a couple of tackles but is tackled by Gus Cincinnaros and uh, he's down near the 10. Number 13 handoff to number 26 who crosses the plane. Touchdown Wildcats 27 to 7. Central is pulling away. Jackets need a spark on offense so they send in uh, freshman quarterback number 18 Jerry Horn uh, first play, his pass is intercepted by number 20, Jamarius Jarvis. Coach, uh, let's talk about, you know, just Jerry. Yeah, I mean, freshman quarterback, your number's punched, and here you go. You come in, and your first throw of your career as a varsity guy, he puts a little air under it, and you got something, but he uh, you know, puts a little too much zip on, doesn't get it over the defenders, and they, it gets picked in this league, and that's, that's what he's learning. That's what he's got to learn. I mean, he, he was throwing against west side and south side last year. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, number 13 forced to scramble but runs up the sideline for a decent gain is forced out of bounds. Jackets ball, number 18 horn in pocket and finds number three Cameron Irick who runs for a decent game. The first, you know, big passing play of the game. Again, number 18 horn under pressure again, jukes somebody and runs for a nice gain. That was, that was, that was a nice play. Jerry's going to be a great player, and I can't wait to watch him grow up. Yes, sir. Central ball, number 13, uh, handoff. It's fumbled and recovered by number 24, Jabari Fortenberry. It's Jacket's ball. <clears throat> Sticking true to the freshman, number 18, Horn, back to pass, would actually be intercepted again by number 25, Hayden Starkey. Brought it down into Denham territory <clears throat> after shedding a few tackles. Um, back to pass again would be number 13, and it's actually deflected and caught by number 84 for a spectacular grab. A few plays later, number six, Veal, uh, scores 34 to seven, Central leads late. That would be the final score of the game. No stats this week. Yeah, we flushed those stats, you know, <laughs> we were trying to make some changes and get it right. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay, Coach, let's talk about that game. So, obviously, uh, it was 7-7 seven to seven at halftime. Kind of what happened between there? Yeah, I mean, I think we're still learning to compete for 48 minutes. I mean, I thought our guys, you know, we're not capitalizing on, on some, some critical situations. Uh, you know, offensively not finishing drives, defensively getting put in some bad spots. But, uh, you know, it's a team game. And, you know, we all got to get better. We all got to feed off each other. And uh, we're learning to compete for 48 minutes. I mean, we saw some glimpses there. Uh, the potential to be very, very good. I mean, uh, you can see our guys are starting to figure out a lot of things defensively. You know, we've had a setback offensively that we just got to keep fighting through, and that's that's the name of this game. You just got to keep fighting. That's uh, that's coaches in the in the coaches' office. That's kids on the pra on the practice field. That's kids in the game field. I mean, we've we've got a job to do, and we got to figure it out and fight to get it right. 
Yes, sir. So uh, obviously, you know, on the offensive side of the ball, we, we were very sluggish and couldn't really get anything going. What's the quarterback play going to look like going forward? Are we going to stick with Ryder and Jerry or, you know, switch? Yeah, switch, we're going to continue to roll with guys that, uh, that, you know, that we feel can lead this football program. Uh, that's number five, Ray McNeely. That's number 17, Ryder Wygant. Number 18, Jerry Horn. You know, all their skill sets are different. So, you know, we're trying to, to figure out different things to put this offense in position to, to roll and get going and get some momentum uh, using guys that have a different skill set for each opportunity. Uh, and that, that's really where we're at. You know, we're, we're with guys that, at quarterback that weren't even on the depth chart in June at quarterback. You know, there were other spots, other positions. But uh, that's part of the game. And, uh, you know, we've we got to continue to stay focused. We got to continue to stay driven towards what it is we want to get accomplished here, and uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's still just a game. I mean, these kids don't have very much longer to play, and they got to take advantage of playing and being part of this brotherhood and ultimately having success. Okay, so switching over to the other side of the ball, how do you think our defense played against Central? Because you know, we had the the pick six, and then yeah, I mean, I thought defensively we we, we were really lights out the the first half. Uh, you know, we gave up the big play there at the end. Uh, we had a busted coverage right there, which, you know, you got a guy starting for the first time and he's played well to that point and he, he makes one mistake that I can assure you he didn't want a mistake, you know, he didn't want to make. Uh, but I, I was really pleased with the effort. I thought they played really well. Uh, you know, second half, things kind of unraveled, got a little tough at times, and uh, they were put in some positions. And, you know, every time you go back out, the one thing about being special in defense, every time you go back out, if, if you're uh, – you know, offense is putting you in a bad spot. You, you know, you're down some points, and you know our guys just got to—they got to understand that you, you got to handle the momentum of the game. You got to handle the swings of the game, and and you just got to keep doing your job. Uh, a lot of the situation we had defensively was was on us as coaches. Uh, you know, I think we were trying. You, you know, sometimes you see the game unfolding, you want to do too much, you want to press too much. Well, you know what? Stick to the game plan. Stick to what these kids are comfortable doing. You know, we were trying to make some decisions late and try to get some calls in late. They might have had them switching strengths or switching fronts, and we got caught a couple times. And uh, by the way, they played. That's not on them. That's on us. And uh, I was really, I was really pleased and really proud of the way they, they, they gave us everything they could. And, and you know, because of that, we got to continue to get better because they're going to give us a chance to win football games going forward. So, like, what's the practice focus going into this week as we go into face uh, Zachary? Well, I mean, we got to continue to to really be nasty up front defensively. You know, we, we got to continue to hone in on and, and controlling the box and, and stopping the run, knowing with the quarterback that they have and the skill guys on the outside that they can throw the football. I mean, we we know that. So, uh, you know, we got to pick and choose our battles and. Uh, you know, see how we want to go about, uh, you know, rallying to the football and maybe giving up some things and, and taking away some things. You know, that's, that's part of the game plan of going against a team of this caliber that makes, it, that makes it exciting. Like, you know, I hope our kids are as excited to play Zachary as I am. You know, I want to see our guys compete against, against some of the best in the state. I mean, that's, that's how you build a program. Uh, before we actually get into the Zachary talk, uh, can you like update us on Mason's injury? Like, how, what's that looking like? He has like? a fractured leg, and he's going to be out a few weeks. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> a little, a little run of bad luck here. Uh, okay, so obviously Zachary, there's a, they're a big time opponent and they're a big district game. So, how do we, how do we get our key players going in this game? Well, I mean, it's just execution. You, you know, we got to figure out a way to get these guys comfortable. In, uh, in the game plan and what, we're, we, what we need them to do. Uh, I'm really excited about the game plan. Uh, I'm really excited because, uh, you know, we've, we've got some stuff, some new things put in that is going to, you know, it's almost trial by fire versus Zachary. But if we have some success there and, and, and add the few wrinkles that we have getting ready to go, uh, and then we grow from there after what we learn in Zachary, uh, you know, I'm really excited about what we can do rebuilding this offense and we – you know, six and seven, which is not the most ideal spot to be in, but uh, but that's what that's what coaching's all about. That's what uh, you know, taking care of everybody's all about. And you know, we got to do what's best, and we got to do what gives our kids a chance to to experience some success. And uh, that's that's the route we're going. And uh, we're gonna see uh, we're gonna see how 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 crazy we can make this offense and see what we can do. Yes, sir. Who are some like? The uh, big name players on their team and our team uh, that we should really look for. Well, you got the Holstein kid at quarterback who is uh, a lot of fun to watch. You, you know, you can tell his poise, his his, his body language, his uh, his deep ball accuracy. Uh, but don't let him fool you. The kid can run. I mean, he's an athlete. You, you can tell he he's he's got a great grasp of the of the game of football and. 
Um, you know, he's, he's it's like lining up against Reese Mooney, you know, another big time quarterback. And I'm excited to see uh, how our guys react to that because, yeah, you know, this is why you play the game. I mean, this is this is who you want to play against. You want to be on the field with these guys, whether it's you wanting to be the best high school football player competing against the best, or whether it's you wanting to be a college football player. Well, these are the type of dudes you've got to be, you've got to play against, and you've got to compete against. And ultimately, you got to whip and you got to beat. And that that's what makes this so much fun to watch. Uh, Worsham at running back is a special player. Uh, you know, he's been there for a couple of years. He's a a big, strong, powerful back that's uh, that's uh, going to get the crease and going to get up on in it, and he's going to hit it with a lot of speed and a lot of power. And uh, he's a, he's a tough one to bring down. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm once again, it's all about the level of competition. When you know, where do you want to go with this? If you if you're talking Denham Springs winning a state championship, well, you know what, you're going to have to beat Zachary. You got to play with Zachary. So this is a huge measuring stick for us in uh, year two under this staff and to see where we're at and, and where we can grow. All right, Coach, I think that's all we, I got for us today. Thank you for coming on. Uh, come out this Friday and support your Yellow Jackets. It's senior night, so come support the seniors. We play Zachary. Uh, as for Fred Beard, I'm Jules Dormain. We'll see you all next week.